Here we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Cecile, and I am the Comfort and Care Counselor here at Amanda Hope Rainbow Angels. We are a nonprofit that's dedicated to supporting children who are going through life-threatening illnesses and cancer. We support them and their families by providing financial assistance, comfy cozies for chemo, and free counseling. Now, this month is actually our gala, so if you would like to help support these amazing warriors and their families, please go to our website, amandahope.org, to find out how you can support. We're gonna just wait a little bit for everyone else to hop on. And we have a very special book that's one of my personal favorites. And it's about a little girl who is experiencing something that not everyone can see. And how she handles this feeling and how she reaches out to others is something that I would like you to pay attention to as we read the book. And we'll have a short discussion about uh, how we can work this in talking with our children as well afterwards. So without further ado, we're going to be reading The Princess and the Fog by Lloyd Jones. Once upon a time, there was a princess. She loved to read, she loved to play outside with her friends. She loved school. She loved to ride her horses. She loved her loyal subjects. And she loved her mom and dad, the king and queen. She was loved by all in turn, for she was smart, beautiful, brave, honest, and kind. She had everything a little girl could ever want, and she was happy. That is, until the fog came. It happened slowly, so slowly that nobody really noticed at first. One by one, the strange dark clouds came to the princess, following her and gradually gathering around her head. As time went on, it got worse and worse and worse. The clouds kept gathering and growing, and eventually her whole head was surrounded by a deep, dark fog that she could hardly see out of anymore. But still, nobody noticed. She started to feel completely alone, even though she wasn't. The fog made the princess feel slow, sad, and tired. She had trouble concentrating on or doing even the simplest of things. And suddenly everything seemed really difficult. All the things she used to love to do, she suddenly didn't feel like doing anymore. So she just stopped doing them. Finally, the king and queen began to see the fog and they wanted to help the princess but didn't know how. They tried to get rid of the fog, but it just wouldn't go away. The king and queen wanted the princess to be happy, but nothing could stop her from feeling sad. They didn't know what to do, but they kept trying. One day, a friend from school came to the castle to ask the princess if she wanted to go out and play. Sarah just got a new basketball. You want to play? But the princess didn't feel like playing. No, she didn't feel like doing anything. The next day, her friend came to the castle again to ask the princess if she wanted to read comics together. The new issue of Squid Boy and Clam Lad came out today. But the princess didn't feel like reading comics. She didn't feel like doing anything. No. The day after that, her friend came back again to ask the princess if she wanted to watch TV together. There's a really good episode of No. But the princess didn't feel like watching TV. So her friend asked the princess 
if she wanted to talk. And at first, the princess wasn't sure. She found it difficult, and she didn't know what to say. But little by little, she began to talk. The princess found that the more she talked about the fog, the better she felt. So they talked and talked and talked and talked, and they talked all night, but still she had more to say. She talked to her other friends, and she talked to her parents. She talked to her teacher and to anyone else who would listen. Some just listened, but some had similar things to say. Some of them even had ideas of ways they could help. Her teacher told her to go and see the adventurers who took her exploring in the fresh air and sunshine. They also helped her set daily challenges for herself. Completing a challenge every day helps her feel healthier and happier. The king and queen took her to see the castle druid. They talked about the fog and he brewed up some potions for her to try. And her friends told her about the thousand year old wise woman who told her that the fog like this had been seen in the kingdom before. It often followed people who felt sad or lonely or who had been treated badly. But sometimes it came for no obvious reason at all. It isn't easy to make the fog go away, but it helps to talk about it and do the things that make you feel happy. The princess had no idea there were so many people in her life who would be willing to help her or even just listen to her when she needed to talk. And suddenly she didn't feel so alone anymore. With all the help and support of the people of the kingdom, the fog started to disappear, bit by bit, just as gradually as it had come. And things started to go back to normal after that. Everyone was happy to see the princess back to her old self again, but that's not the end of the story. Because every now and then, the dark clouds would start to come back, but when they did, she knew where to turn. The end. Learning to cope with emotions is a normal part of a child's development. Children will experience a range of emotions, including feelings of sadness that may be very appropriate response to difficult situations that they might face. However, periods of sadness or low mood are not as common and can be rel relatively short-lived. However, if this persists for longer than a few weeks, it can be very overwhelming and can impact a child's daily life. It is important to explore this more carefully and listen to your child's experiences and provide the extra support when needed. Periods of low mood can occur as a child for a variety of reasons, and a small proportion of children may go on to develop depression. Parents, you can detect these changes in your child's mood and behavior by checking to see if they have these periods of boredom, withdrawn, are they no longer showing interest in activities and hobbies that they usually enjoy? You will notice these changes in an appetite or disturbance in their sleep patterns. You might notice they feel tired or lacking in energy for a lot of the time. It can also be accompanied by tearfulness, low self-esteem, feeling like they are no good. And some children might also become irritable, agitated, have physical complaints like headaches or stomach aches, and it can also be associated with increased anxiety. They might get upset or become very inconsolable when apart from the parents or your caretaker, and they might become more clingy. Periods of low mood or depression may be triggered by a number of factors and they can occur immediately after a stressful event or they can develop gradually over time. And events that cause disruption to a child's relationship or routine are also common triggers. So if it's a parent separation, um, bereavement, or long-term illness in the child or family, that can also cause feelings of depression. It can also run in families, and children might be more vulnerable to developing depression if a parent or close family member suffers from it as well. How can you help as a parent and caretaker? You can help by listening. 
Listen to your child. Help them feel that they are being heard. Help them to make sense of these experiences and develop ways of managing their feelings. You can support your child uh, to continue with the activities that they are enjoying before they may have started feeling these feelings of depression, boredom, withdrawn. Encourage them to spend time with friends and family members. And if we're not able to see them in person, encourage Zoom calls, phone calls, ways of corresponding. Um, you can also talk with your family doctor. They'll be able to sense and assess those difficulties and see if there's more details that need to be uh, discussed. And then they might suggest seeing a counselor. Uh, again, our counseling for our children who have any long-term illnesses and cancer are free. We want to make sure that if you need the support, it is available to you. At school, if there's additional support needed to, they usually have um, school psychologists, school counselors that are available to support the child within the school system. What's a good way to remember how to deal with these big and difficult emotions is remembering that all feelings are temporary. If we think of feelings like clouds in the sky, it helps us to realize that it is not permanent. A happy cloud is just as short-lived as a sad cloud. Sometimes we have rainy seasons where the clouds come in and it seems like it's just continuously rainy, cloudy, and dark. However, the clouds will not last forever. If you go out and you just take a moment with your child to look up at the sky and you have them notice the clouds going by, are you able to catch that cloud and hold it? Are you able to keep that cloud? Usually the answer is no, because the clouds keep moving and passing and changing. Just as we have feelings of anxiety, feelings of sadness, irritability, agitated, and all these other uncomfortable feelings, these feelings will not last forever. These feelings, too, will pass like clouds in the sky. And with that, we're going to read The Princess in the Fog one more time by Lloyd-Jones. Once upon a time, there was a princess. She loved to read. She loved to play outside with her friends. She loved school. She loved to ride her horses. She loved her loyal subjects. She loved her mom and dad, the king and queen. And she was loved by all in turn, for she was smart, beautiful, brave, honest, and kind. She had everything a little girl could ever want, and she was happy. That is, until the fog came. It happened slowly so slowly that nobody really noticed at first. One by one, the strange dark clouds came to the princess, following her and gradually gathering around her head. As time went on, it got worse and worse and worse. The clouds kept gathering and growing, and eventually her whole head was surrounded by a deep, dark fog she could hardly see out of anymore but still nobody noticed. She started to feel completely alone, even though she wasn't. The fog made the princess feel slow, sad, and tired. She had trouble concentrating on her even doing the simplest things. And suddenly everything seemed really difficult. All the things she used to love to do, she suddenly didn't feel like doing anymore. So she just stopped doing that. Finally, the king and queen began to see the fog. They wanted to help the princess, but they didn't know how. They tried to get rid of the fog, but it just wouldn't go away. The king and queen just wanted the princess to be happy, but nothing could stop her from feeling sad. They didn't know what to do, but they kept trying. One day, a friend from school came to the castle to ask the princess if she wanted to go out and play. Sarah just got a new basketball. You want to play? But the princess did not feel like playing. No. She didn't feel like doing anything. 
The next day, her friend came to the castle again to ask the princess if she wanted to read comics together. A new issue of Squid Boy and Clam Lad came out today. But the princess didn't feel like reading comics. She didn't feel like doing anything. No. The day after that, her friend came back again to ask the princess if she wanted to watch some TV together. There's a really good episode of No. But the princess didn't feel like watching TV. So her friend asked the princess if she wanted to talk. And at first, the princess wasn't sure. She found it difficult and she didn't know what to say. But little by little, she began to talk. The princess found that the more she talked about the fog, the better she felt. So they talked and talked and talked and talked, and they talked all night, but still she had more to say. So she talked to her other friends, and she talked to her parents, she talked to her teacher, and to anyone who would listen. Some just listened, but some had similar things to say. Some of them even had ideas of ways that they could help. Her teacher told her to go and see the adventurers who took her exploring in the fresh air and sunshine. They also helped her set daily challenges for herself. Completing a challenge every day helped her to feel healthier and happier. The king and queen took her to see the castle druid and they talked about the fog and he brewed up some potions for her to try. And her friends told her about the thousand year old wise woman who told her that fog like this has been seen in the kingdom before. And it often followed people who had felt sad or lonely or had been treated badly. But sometimes it came for no obvious reason at all. And it isn't easy to make the fog go away, but it helps to talk about it and do the things that make you feel happy. The princess had no idea there were so many people in her life who would be willing to help her or even just to listen to her when she needed to talk. And suddenly she didn't feel so alone anymore. With all the help and support of the people of the kingdom, the fog started to disappear bit by bit, just as gradually as it can. Things started to go back to normal after that. Everyone was happy to see the princess back to her old self again. But that's not the end of the story. Every now and then, the dark clouds would start to come back. But when they did, she knew where to turn. Thank you all for joining us for story time. Please go to our website, amandahope.org, for more information on how you can get support for a warrior you know who might be experiencing depression, as well as how to support these amazing children and their families. Thank you so much again for joining. I'll see you next week and sending you all butterfly kisses and big hugs. Bye, everybody.